This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com. This show is brought to you by Slice on Broadway. Supporting Pittsburgh podcasting with the perfect pepperoni pizza, sliceonbroadway.com. And listeners like you, support this show at patreon.com slash awesomecast. Sidekick Media Services. We are your sidekick in business for social media, video production, and more. Find out more at sidekickmediaservices.com. Hey guys, it's time to get geeky, get techy. It is the Awesome Cast. I'm Mike Sorg at Sorgatron on the Twitter for our Awesome Cast episode 398 coming at you from the Sorgatron Media Studios in the Beachview neighborhood of Pittsburgh, PA. Back after a week hiatus and just two weeks away from Awesome Cast 400, where we'll be officially celebrating the eight year anniversary. Very excited for that and very excited to have a full studio here today. Uh, first of all, with us, he is a uh, gadget guru at Big Bank International Esquire. He is John Chichilla. Hey, it's good to be back in studio. Yeah, welcome back. You're not some phantom uh, um, uh, on the laptop again. No. You know, they, they, whenever you come at us uh, from Studio C, it's like you're our, our Max Hedrum, especially <laughs> when the bandwidth isn't working too well like it was a couple of weeks ago. <laughs> well, my shirt was thrown. It looked like my shirt was thrown. Oh, yeah, out. When, when your shirt. Is that the shirt? Um, no, that was a, it was a different shirt. This one's small, small circles. The other one, remember, was small, small flowers. Small flowers. <laughs> Apparently not good for webcams. You were completely destroying the bandwidth of, of the webcam there. How's so. this one working? It's, yeah, well, we, we have some higher end cameras on you in here, so I think that's good. I don't know. After, it hasn't looked after it filters through the Facebook up on the screen. That's pretty good. That's all right. You're not breaking the TV, and nobody's yelling about it in the chat room. Uh, so yes. that's good. <laughs> yes. Yet. Yet. And also it's with time. us, she is the sales and marketing director at the marketing and sales director at the Scare <laughs> Wait. <laughs> Ma'am and shenanigans. Ma'am shenanigans at the Scare House. Yes. She is Katie Dudas, the Dudders. Hi. Hi. And also interviewer of indie, uh, of small indie wrestlers. So tiny indie wrestlers. I sit in chairs. <laughs> you sit in chairs. <laughs> I'll travel we to tried. you and sit on a chair. We tried. We, we put the one, I left the one in there, I think, where you stood up next to um, <laughs> um, the Fresh Prince of Midair. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> that was, that's believe. amazing. Yeah, he didn't believe I was as tall as I was. Yeah, she, he like came up to your armpit. Yeah. <laughs> it was. I mean, this was uh, Kenny for background. This this was a welterweight wrestling, so nobody was over 185 pounds, mm -hmm. which meant I think one guy was six foot, and he mm -hmm. was basically the giant of the show. So, uh, but anyways, uh, good to have you with us, Ken. I know you found some 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 fun shenanigans there. Oh, um, it's gonna be my awesome thing of the week. Oh, okay, we'll get to that. <laughs> it, we, okay, <laughs> <laughs> you didn't say I had to be tech or or, I, new or, 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 or yours. Uh, <laughs> yeah, or mine. There are no rules. There's no rules. No, in there's talk. no rules. No rules with this one. <laughs> um, also with us, Kenny Chen. He is the uh, innovation director over at Ascender. Back with us again. Good to hey, have you back in studio. Great to be back. So yeah. uh, how, are, how are things going over there at Ascender? And please tell, tell people that don't know, uh, what is Ascender? Uh, yeah, no, Ascender, uh, it's been around for about six years. It started off as a startup incubator. We're an economic development organization. So all that means is that we try to support uh, uh, cool people trying to do cool things in, in the town. <laughs> in town. <laughs> so uh, startups, entrepreneurs, you know, nonprofits. Uh, we also host the annual Thrival Innovation and Music Festival mm -hmm. um, and are just kind of like the, uh, the, the silly putty that morphs into fitting gaps within like the ecosystem. And I'm the silliest of the putty. And if, that's why you fit so well into this show. <laughs> um, and actually, some of the things that we've talked about on the show over the last couple of years, especially um, uh, AIX Prize and mm -hmm. uh, the uh, VR Meetup I, mm -hmm. I was discussing probably maybe about a month ago, uh, that's all things that have happened at Ascender, and Kenny has a hand in a lot of those events. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's good to have you back on. Yeah, thanks. It's good to be back. All right. And thank you also, people in the chat room here on Facebook Live here uh, every Tuesday at 7 p.m. Eastern, including Amanda, uh, Alex from the West Coast, uh, my mom. Hi, mom. Uh, <laughs> and a few other people dropping in as well uh, during us, this. Uh, we got a few people in there. Uh, thank you, everybody, for joining us here. And you too can join us on our Facebook for Awesome Cast. Please join the Facebook group for Awesome Cast. There's a lot of great discussions, and a lot of those stories do make it into the rundown for consideration for us to discuss. We 
we only do about an hour every week, so we don't get to everything. And sometimes our conversations go a little bit long, uh, but we try to do best we can. Uh, you can hit us up, awesomecast at sorgatronmedia.com, awesomecast on the Twitter. Subscribe to the show on iTunes, Stitcher, Spreaker, iHeartRadio, Google Play Music, as well as video versions on the Awesomecast YouTube and Facebook page and also please check out our streaming partners i just visited our friends over at rivers edge pgh.com on the river talk we talked about claw machines virtual uh real claw machines in in japan uh this past weekend and uh and and pong you play with your feet at the target up here in south hills village so check out the latest episode it's on the podcast uh, network for rivers edge pgh.com and this show is replayed over there on saturdays at 9 a.m eastern time and uh also thanks to our other streaming partner the 405 media.com we're there weekdays every weekday at 9 a.m pacific time noon eastern for you guys here in the pittsburgh area and also thank you so much uh again everybody in the chat room but if you want to be part of our studio audience please hit us up on the social media for twitter or awesomecast at sorgatronmedia.com you can hang out with us here in the studio uh maybe grab a slice of pizza from our good friends at slice on broadway and uh if you want to support the show uh, thank you to our friends. We have a new Patreon, guys. Uh, at the Coffee Club $5 level, you guys can do so, too, at uh, patreon.com slash awesomecast. First, Matt Weller is there. He's been there a good long time. But also, somebody who's been on the show before, John DeGore, joins us at the $5 yeah. Coffee Club awesome. level. They get some they get some uh, extra content, like me being confused about uh, whether I'm going to get sued by the EU uh, and other <laughs> things that we may come up with. <laughs> <whole> uh, <laughs> What's that? The whole you. All <laughs> yeah. of them. Everyone. Yes, everyone. Every one of them. <laughs> They're all going to be lined up at your front door. Yeah, yeah. We're like, what are, wait, what, what are all these Europeans doing lined up in front of my... Step what you're doing are they right here? now. Are you they must here? get the sorg. Are they... <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's scary. That's really scary. <laughs> and also, at a fan of the show, $1 level, our friend Michael Fedor. Uh, Mike Fedor's show on the Twitter. Thank you so much, you guys, uh, uh, supporting the show. Literally helping keep the lights on here in the studio at Sorgatron media um and let's get into our awesome thing of the week we got a few things lined up here and since i already teased it we got to go uh, uh, uh see what katie found here in the studio I, this has been sitting in my house for so long i think one of the old members of wrestling mayhem show gave that to me years ago uh-huh. and we have board game night here so i had to bring it in here just for the spectacle of it but i understand you have new mechanisms i have for this new plans thing. Yes. Okay. So what do you have there? It's called Doorways to Horror, the VCR oh, game. Oh, man. Oh, Look man. That. Featuring color scan technology, I assume. Color scan. And, so, and if you didn't hear, that's a VCR game. There used to be a thing called a VCR. VCR. <laughs> Um, so you open the box. There's a box. First, there's a box. This is there, physical. You Let's, could be characters of uh, your choosing. Yeah, we really have witch. to explain this for the iPhone generation here. Yes, yeah, so there's a witch and oh, a wow. vampire, that, those, werewolf. Those actually look pretty cool. I've Zombie? I've, I've never Ooh. really even opened and gone through this. Ooh, look at this. Look at this. You have money, gold certificates, I'm assuming are important. Yeah, it looks like gold. Or, gold. or stolen from a Monopoly deck. <laughs> it's fine. Uh-huh, some little uh-huh. coiny things. Some little coiny things. Yeah, some this tokens. is a VHS tape. It just says VCR Gallery of Games. It's not Doorways even... <laughs> to Horror. <laughs> no, see, here's my worry about this. I'm afraid we're going to put it into a VCR ready to play this thing, and it ends up somebody recorded a porn over it. Well, that would be... Or, I mean, that's kind of my thing on or the show anyway. Or a soap <laughs> opera or something like that. So I would not do this live on Twitch Oh, it's initially. so live. <laughs> it's so live. All of this is going to be live. So I have magic spells. Screw you, Magic the Gathering. Look at this. Yeah. <laughs> I got a magic spell right there. Eight. They have all kinds of numbers, each Would, of them. Does it, say, does it also say VCR Gallery of Game on the back of the cards? Yes, it does. Yes, it does. VCR Gallery of Game. Not even the name of the game, but just the general oh. line of them. Oh, look. Silver Bullet gets the werewolf. Things happen in this game. It's full of action. Oh, <laughs> Adventure. Geez. Intrigue. I love your, your throwing this back here. Well, I wonder, is it one of those games where like you... Play a part of the video and then you do something. Yeah. Yeah. Or is it gonna like, like on some of the D like we've done the ones that are DVDs and it's like a who done it murder mystery dinner thing. Mm-hmm. Oh, if you're curious. But you can kind of obviously a DVD is very easy to skip around to, so it's like oh you can oh, go I'm to sorry. this. Did chapter you say you're not this? sure how to do this? Let me pull out this. If your VCR is not equipped with a visual fast forward scan, follow these instructions. <laughs> <laughs> Before playing your first game, rewind the tape to the beginning, then set your counter to zero. Play the tape and mark off on this card the counter numbers that correspond to each doorway. 
color coded. Okay. Um, so, so, but you're going to like <laughs> see what's going on. It just says color doorway. It's his doorway number in purple, yellow, orange. And I'm not sure what these colors mean. I don't want to give away too much. Spoilers. Spoilers. <laughs> but you're going to like have to sit there and fast forward. Yeah. Like, yeah. You're like... going to have to sit there and fast forward <laughs> like a Neanderthal. <laughs> I, I, I mean, there's a P on here, so that might be purple there and orange and blue. Oh, More okay. teasers with okay. the dice, the fancy yeah, well. dice. So, so I, I, I just did a quick search for this. And and by the way, if that VCR tape happens to be porn or doesn't work or something like that, or you can't find a VCR, let's be honest, we know what we have VCRs. Um, uh, the entire video is on YouTube. Yes! <laughs> is it? Yes, it is. I'll come up there on the monitor in a second for you guys. Oh, so, like, it, it's showing, like, some old, I'm presuming this was, like, public domain footage, maybe, or they bought on a, you know, it looks like something from Mystery Science Theater. <laughs> and, and then, like, the cards come up, those little art cards of, like, the Draculas and the monsters and everything like that. And and I guess that, that takes you to what happened. Pause tape. Collect for spells on werewolf, monster slash vampire. Then bid for werewolf. Roll it to die and proceed. So it tells you what to do. It's like pulling a card, I guess. Right? And uh, these graphics are pretty amazing. No, I love that. So just look up Doorways <laughs> to Horror if you guys are, are, are on the audio podcast and see what we're talking about here. Um, yeah, pause tape. So, you, <laughs> so you're looking for these screens. And VCRs were not that fast when you did the visual fast forward. So... Whoa. Um, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> this is amazing. So, um, so you're looking to do this on a Twitch stream, huh? Yeah, some sort of live shenanigans. Live I think shenanigans we need to get or some Facebook Live or something. Yeah, that should oh, be good. This may, may strength <laughs> tri- chip. That's this what this is. Strength, strength chip, chip, and you just strength dropped chip. it on the ground. Yes, I lost my strength by throwing it on the ground. <laughs> <laughs> but yes, I'm looking forward to playing this game. It is fun. How many for, players? One to four. Know. Two to six. Yeah, Ages ten to adult. Yeah. <laughs> ten to adult. Ten to adult. There no you youngins go. playing this game. Nope. It's too scary. Doorways to horror. We'll introduce you to a new era of VCR fun and excitement. A new era. What was the era? 1986, I think it says. Uh, yes, 86. Yes, 1986. Wow. Is, it's also on uh, BoardGameGeek.com. There's some information on it as well. Beautifully illustrated game pieces. <laughs> It has a 5.3 rating on GameGeek.com. Out of what? Board, BoardGameGeek.com. I'm presuming six. Ten? <laughs> six. Five. <laughs> yes. Um, oh, there's a Canadian edition. <laughs> a. Everybody's just sweeter and nicer to each other in, in every sentence with A. The, the, the monsters apologize. All right. Um, let's go to Chilla. What is your awesome thing of the week? So my awesome thing of the week is a... It's a brick and mortar store as well as an online what? store. Yes, it's, what? Yes, it, it, it's in Although the real. I did it's in the real world. I did download <laughs> an app goals. for this. <laughs> so it's it's called Box Lunch, and I was walking through the mall, and I there was like a I can't remember if it was like a Han Solo thing or something Marvel in the front window. I'm like, what is this place? So I walked in, and it's pretty cool. The store is actually set up in sections, and they have like a Harry Potter section, a Star Wars section, a Marvel section, a DC section. Um, pretty much anything pop culture related. They have officially licensed and unofficially licensed merchandise from a, from a lot of the things. You can get um, Tony Stark's cologne in there. Um, you can get, I got Carla for, for my birthday, got me the Stark Industries soccer jersey. Um, there's all kinds of really cool stuff in there. And they, I didn't realize they even had as much of an online store as they did when I until today when we were talking about it. I'm like, oh, there's probably a website The really cool thing that they do is for every $10 you spend in the store, um, they will donate a meal um, to those in need. So I thought that was a really cool, uh, really cool thing for them. They have a, they have a also have, if you're part of their membership club, which is free to join and you round up to the next dollar, even if you spend $2 and 99 cents in there and round up to $3. So you donate a penny, they will match whatever it takes to get another person a meal. So thought it was a very, very cool concept way to, way to give back, but also a very, very cool store with tons of, of trinkets and random stuff that I had never seen before, mm-hmm. as well as cool candy. Like they have the Mario Brothers mystery boxes. They're like Ooh. little tins with candy in them. There's all kinds of stuff in there. So at, at all different price points. So so, so it, it, it's like, you know, it's like it's that Brandon Geeky merchandise like you would see in a Hot Topic or a Spencer Gifts. 
but with a little more socially mindedness of going to like it, it felt like going to a goodwill because goodwill does like that roundup thing too right yeah so. and the one thing i will say is i felt like their stuff was a little more unique than the hot topic mm-hmm. like the hot topic definitely has it feels a like bulk load of whatever they have yeah like, there's whatever like t-shirt or what, whatever like standard logo for like whatever is hot is going to be there mm-hmm. at least right like they had a shirt it was a uh, mother of dragons mm-hmm. um that was from Game of Thrones. Um, I think they only had like maybe ten. Yeah, that's what you're saying. There's not like them. bulks of things. There's, there's, a, there's it's not, not. Yeah, you're not. And and they get more stock in over time, but it's, I don't think they have. It, there's not a huge warehouse in the back. So there's a little um, bit of like finding something unique every time you go in. Mm-hmm. From the sounds of like, there's turnover and stuff. Yes. You're not going to see the same stuff. Like if you go to a hot topic a month from now, it's basically the same stuff, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Plus whatever movie's coming out. Um, yeah, I can get the Yeah Baby um, Star Lord T-shirt from Guardians Two <gasps> in the Hot Topic, and it's been there since. Yeah, Guardians came out, and they're going to keep getting more in. This, this place doesn't seem. This like feels that. like it, it may give you a little more of the uniqueness you get from like a loot crate. Right? Yes, like somebody was asking about the shirt I'm wearing today. Well, well they asked me if this was an LSD molecule, uh, <laughs> but uh, I was like, no, it's caffeine. Um, but <laughs> but still, it's like this is not a shirt you see everywhere, or you see you see it, you're just like. You got Luke Creek too, you know. Like I'll I'll see that like some like a lot of geek events, um, but you'll see one in the crowd, right? Maybe versus Hot Topic, it's just like you're going to see everybody with that Hot Topic shirt almost, right? Um, no, this is cool. So it's a uh, boxlunch.com. As bo- just b o x lunch. And then in Pittsburgh, I know we have there's one in Robinson, one in South Hills Village, mm-hmm. and then I noticed there was one in Canton, Ohio, at Belden Village Mall. So mm-hmm. they're 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 popping up. Yeah, and I don't know how wide this is. Oh, it, well, these seem to be the only two in the 50-mile radius. Uh, so yeah, you know, I went out to 100 miles, and it that's what threw up the Belton Village. Okay, Ohio, okay. So. so not a ton of them, but mm-hmm. this could be something popping up. That's interesting that two popped up like relatively close here in Pittsburgh, too. Yeah. So uh, that'll be cool to see. Go check uh, out. They have Pusheen and Hello Kitty. Oh, okay, I'm you're in. in. I'm totally. I was, in, I was in to begin way. with. <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. I need this now. <laughs> <laughs> we'll go on a field trip. Yes. Um, all right. Kenny, what is your awesome thing of the week? Yeah. Okay. Um, so I don't know if I, I, I don't think I did anything notable this week except for learn a bit, um, learn a bit about post quantum cryptography, which I'm not like equipped to, to like, <laughs> wait, 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 wait. Can you at um, least like tell us what that <laughs> is? Just making up words. General, because, yeah, I just, I just feel like you just put words together <laughs> that I don't understand by uh, themselves. So, um, so, so I've got a friend who's uh, defending her dissertation on post post quantum cryptographic like methods. So, oh, no big deal. Um, like, and, and yeah, I've been kind of her like, um, uh sound off like test uh judge kind of person to ask all the questions i can think of um but anyway so uh current like modern cryptographic methods um you know they rely on things like prime factorization of obscenely large numbers and other Mm -hmm. kinds of things that like traditional computers just can't do they're giant math problems exactly they're just really hard math problems that would take longer than like the age of the universe for a traditional (laughs) computer to crack but the thing is when you introduce quantum computers and you can do um uh you can do things in what they call polynomial time that you wouldn't otherwise be able to do in mm-hmm. with um, with regular computers. Um, things like those prime factorization and other hard math problems break down. And so they're looking at different methods of, um, of creating problems that even quantum computers can't crack, uh, such as having uh, 250-dimensional like lattice problems that... Um, you just you know, wouldn't even be able to start to approach um, and and some other kinds of things. So. And this is mostly theoretical now, right? Uh, well, I mean, people have been developing the actual algorithms mm-hmm. that, um, that are being used. And um, there are at least four, you know, primary like camps, uh, camps, methods, like, you know, whatnot that people are pursuing for, um, you know, quantum post quantum cryptography uh but i mean you know we don't have very advanced quantum computers yet so that's not quite necessary not there yet yeah so um 
Should I just leave it at that? Yeah. I think uh, no, did you? Did you? Because I think you were getting to. Was that your awesome thing? Or? No, no. So, <laughs> so, so the awesome thing was more from like a week and a half ago. Um, mm-hmm. So I, I spent a week. Uh, in Geneva for the second annual um, AI for Good Summit with the UN um, and had uh, a few other folks from from Pittsburgh uh, there with me as well. Um, You know, it's uh, pretty much like the UN trying to figure out their ethical AI um, and policy uh, strategies as they figure out what kind of uh, standards, regulations, governance structures they should put in place for this very, you know, significant and impactful uh, technology. So, uh, yeah, the the mayor was there, a um, uh, couple of faculty from Pitt and CMU, um, someone from the NIH, and uh, yeah, Pittsburgh um, was P- Pittsburgh was like the MVP or. MBC, most valuable city. Yeah, um, um, we we basically uh, convinced the organizers to like highlight Pittsburgh as the as the leading city, um, you know, in this AI for good movement. And uh, there should be press coming out about that later this week. But you're hearing it first here on. Uh, yeah, awesome cast. That's amazing. And we do we talk a lot about how it's amazing how much of this like AI stuff is happening. Like mm-hmm. everybody from Amazon to uh, of course infamously Uber, I guess these days. Uh there <laughs> are a bunch of other people in here and it really is becoming a pretty cool hotbed uh for all this AI stuff. And you're 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 you seem to be at ground zero for that from the looks of things. <laughs> I guess so. I mean it's it's a pretty accessible space. Um I mean I've only been like dabbling in this like AI policy realm for about two years. And you know, most of that information is like out there. Uh, you spend a couple hundred hours just like reading up on the on the foundational stuff and then, you know, engage with other smart people. Um and so that's yeah. Awesome. Now I feel like everyone should be diving into the into that deep end of things. That's awesome. Or at least like kind of get an idea of what the issues are. So I man, it's, it's going to be a lot of discussion on top of the actual implementation, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So yeah, I mean, there's a lot of that happening these days. That's awesome. Um, where can people? What's a good place for people to kind of, um, you know dive into that these Mm -hmm. days anything that you're involved with or anything like that yeah totally so uh let's see you know um anyone can can look up the entire ai for good proceedings from this year and last year just searching like ai for good summit Mm -hmm. um takes you to uh the itu website um that's the international telecommunication union a 153 year old um like un agency that leads all of their like tech modernization kind of initiatives these days. They also do cool stuff on smart cities and other kinds of things. Uh, So they've got webcasts, transcripts, you know, other things from these summits. Um, But for um, anyone else who's, you know, just looking to pick up a couple of books or so, um, uh, uh, let's see, Nick Bostrom, um, his book, Super Intelligence, um, Ray Kurzweil, um, the singularity is near. Mm-hmm. Um, I've Max, heard some great yeah. interviews with him over on mm-hmm. the uh, Twit Twi- Network with Triangulation mm-hmm, about totally. the singularity. It's been really fascinating. Yeah. Um, let's see. Max Tegmark, um, Life 3.0, uh, takes a really nice kind of cross cutting approach and not just looking into AI. Mm-hmm. Um, so, uh, yeah, there's, there's a lot of great uh, stuff out there. There's some great podcasts as, as well. Um, so that's awesome. So it's it's definitely something something for for people that go a little deeper on AI than we probably do this show. So hey. all right. Oh hey, my awesome thing of the week, and I'm again a little late to the uh, party on this one, but uh, we we wait. We we should talk about M- Missy's awesome thing. Would you like me to talk about this? Yeah. Okay. Um, can you bring can you bring the subject over here so I can show that on the on the video? <laughs> so we the, the, there's two parts to this. First of all, uh, I'll tell you about Missy's awesome thing is how durable an iPhone 6s is. Um, uh, Katie, if you want to hold, actually, I'm a little closer to the. He has the same. Just don't drop it. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's the that's the issue. First of all, we're uh, doing dealing with some stuff here uh, recently, and uh, uh, Missy drops her iPhone 6s. 
Uh, it has a case on it. It has a nice little rubbery case. So it's, it's you know, a little bit protected. Um, and she drops it out of the car. And it sounds like that sound when like a belt buckle hits the door, you know, and I was like, oh, that didn't sound good. And I was like, oh, that was my phone. I'm like, oh, well, the screen didn't break. Good news. It works. It's fine. Uh, it's a little bended. Uh, you can probably see a little bit there if I hold it at the right angle, but it's definitely bendy. Um, and also the power button doesn't work. So just enough for this to be a problem and just enough time that our Apple Care expired in January. And this is now late uh, May where this issue has popped up. So uh, that's, that's fine. Her mother uh, uh, fixes phones for her day job. So we'll send this out to another <laughs> somebody in California to fix. Um, but that meant it's time to upgrade her phone. And she was eyeing the uh, iPhone 10. And we, we took care of it. We have a next plan. So it's a little, you know, easy to deal with. But uh, unfortunately, because this happened last time, we uh, went in for her, her for, for my phone I got her an Apple Watch, and we walked away with an extra iPad. Damn you, AT and T! Um, <laughs> and this time, they enticed me with sixty dollars off an Apple Watch. Uh, so I finally said goodbye Whoa. to the Pebble Two. Oh. I'm that, I'm finally on the Apple Watch. It is the Series Three with LTE, of course. Um, I'm still kind of figuring it out. I, I've had this since Friday. It's now Tuesday. Um, you know, things like making sure the notifi- notifications come through like I want them to seeing what I can do with it. I like the fact that I can talk to Siri and it, I can feel like I'm whispering to it and I'm having a conversation even though I'm in around people, you know? Um, it's, it's, it, it's, it's nice that I can interact with more than just text messages now, and even that was getting really limited on the Pebble 2 because, again, I got the Pebble 2 right when they cut it off uh, and Fitbit had bought them, and it was getting less and less functional <laughs> as I go, uh, so the, the battery life was down to what an Apple watch is, which you can get about two days out of this now, right? And in about, about every three days I was already charging. So I'm mm-hmm. like, okay, I'm just over the line. Missy's had one for two months. Um, so I, I just completely all in on it. Um, chill. I was telling you beforehand, the surprise. And the thing I forgot about is it unlocks my MacBook. When I'm sitting here and I go to log it in and I have that. So it'll, you know, after like two minutes, you have to plug in the, the code, you know, for security. I take the, I take mm-hmm. the MacBook with me for a bit, uh, for a few things, um, uh, for traveling and everything. So that, that whole, like, you sit down and just, oh, hold on, unlocking. <laughs> it, it's kind of that effect, like, when you have the face. And, the, it, and it's cool, too. I like it because I, I don't feel like I could type my password faster than it unlocks it. So I really feel right. like it's... It's 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 really there. Like it's 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 not a hindrance. Like oh, I'm waiting for it to. Un- it's really cool that it can do this, but I'm waiting for it to unlock. It's like you sit down. By the time I hit the space bar, like it's <laughs> yeah, I'm working. Yeah, you are. You you really are. You know, you know, leaving and coming back to my desk and it mm-hmm. pops up. You know, that's that's been really really cool. And, and again, this is, again, this is a 2013 MacBook that I've been Frankensteining with with parts mm-hmm. getting replaced with it, and it still works right. Um, so that's a really nice little feature to it. Um, other than that, I, I feel like I'm still figuring out the best way to use it. Um, I'm using the Siri. Just u- use it like a bop it, like like a bop, <laughs> it? bop it, pinch it. Lick it, <laughs> uh, headbutt it. I have figured out that I can check out notifications with my nose. Nice. There you go. Yeah. yeah you know, <laughs> you can it, use it. Uh, are you still doing Pokemon or no? Um, I've started using it. You can't catch the Pokemon on there, but I'll let you know they're there. They're but alert. you can get the Pokestops and mm-hmm. it counts towards your exercise rings. Ooh. By the way, I am really good at, at, at closing my standing ring, but that's about it so far. Still figuring out the rest of that. So, um, but no, it, it's 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 been interesting. I'm probably gonna see about trying out some zombies run on here. I've, I've always wanted to try that out. Um, <laughs> Every time I hear you say that, I just want one of my zombies to just pop up behind you and chase you. <laughs> yeah, that's the thing. We could do like real life t- zombies run. Yeah, like, need... I, haven't we talked about that? Something you could rent your zombies for? Yes. Like for a running a run or something. <laughs> oh my gosh! If you need to get in shape, rent a zombie. <laughs> <laughs> or a clown. I got a clown. You know? Cla- oh, yeah. I, yeah. Yeah, Dave the clown might be. I'll, I'll take zombies over oh, clowns yeah. any day. If you're already afraid of clowns and like that, you know, six and a half foot tall clown comes at yeah. you, yeah, I have, I'm, it's a little unsettling for me too. And I, he makes me And tiny. I'm a juggalo. Yeah. And it's unsettling. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah. So, so no, it's been interesting. I'm sure as I figure things out, it'll be like 
you know, I, I'm annoyed that my bank doesn't use Apple Pay, so I can't do that yet. I don't. I, I watched somebody the last trip to Kansas, like checking in for their flight. I used, on their to, watch. I used it on. It's so I used it on awkward. <laughs> I just, I just How go. You, yeah, but I just you, turn. Like, you, there's no easy way to do that. You're what I found was is that, that way. it was weird for me because I was worried that it was going to turn off the screen, mm-hmm. like, like as it went over, but. I, but I but if problem. it's on Apple like wallet, it's gonna like turn off yeah, all those. The so wallet is on. The wallet's yeah, good to go. Um, the one thing that I find super satisfying is where it like if you go swimming or are in the shower, and then as soon as you get out of whatever body of water you're in, um, or heavily watered area, if you swipe up and you scroll down, there's a little rain droplet. Mm-hmm. You tap that and it tells you to spin the crown, and then it makes this like beeping. And it yeah. actually is, is firing the speaker. And you can watch the water literally go that's what it's out doing. the side that's of the watch. That's what it's yeah. doing. So and it's it's completely waterproof. Look, mm-hmm. I can literally go swimming with this. I've, so we were worried you had to yeah. set that before you go in the water. No. Um, that's for after you get out of the water to clear okay. out the chamber. All right. I shower with it. I've I've swam with it. I've... Yeah. See, see, that's when I that's when I charge it is when I'm in the shower. Like I'm I'm hesitant I'm about getting into the ocean. Like I feel like yeah, with sand. I don't feel good about that. Salt, salt water and sand grit against it. Yeah, that makes me a little nervous. But I don't know. There was that one guy that got that saved himself with it because there were sharks surrounding him or whatever, mm-hmm. and he used the LTE to make a phone call. Um, if you're that nervous, wow. about it, I guess you could take it in the ocean. Wow. Um, that's but, that's fun. Um, yeah. But uh, but still, again, playing with it, it, the notifications aren't exactly like the way that I liked it. Well, like I, and I just have to play with the app a little bit more. I, I like out. firing the camera remotely from it and being able to see the viewfinder. So if you have your camera propped yeah. up, yeah, take a picture of your family or whatever, you can see what it sees and then set like a five second timer. I don't know. And it's you see if there's some GoPro stuff, and maybe I'll have to upgrade my GoPro to work with it because I'm pretty you're sure be upgrading everything. Because I know because I know watch. I've heard of like like production stuff you can do with the apple watch and that's one of the reasons i wanted one um but i I need to go back to or just tweet alex Lindsay and be like so what do i do with my apple watch now (laughs) um and what's gonna not cost me an alex because that's like the price of photoshop um but anyways um so that's my fun thing and i'm sure i'll have plenty to talk about it as i kind of discover on this thing you know what's also awesome and you guys should discover if you're over here in the Beachview neighborhood of Pittsburgh, you guys should come on down here. It's uh, uh, tucked in here. You, people don't know what's up here. People literally on the next hill don't know Beachview is here in the south of uh, Pittsburgh, in the city. But in here is the OG, the original, our good friends at Slice on Broadway, supporting Pittsburgh podcasting with a perfect pepperoni pizza for a good long time here. Somebody was in there. I guess they've been around for, what was it, six, eight years now? Like they couldn't believe that they were around that long. Um, and they have uh, four locations. Of course, like I said, the OG right up the street. Their namesake, Broadway Avenue here in Beachview, as well as PNC Park, home of the Pittsburgh Pirates, Carnegie, PA on Main Street, as well as out in the East End, out in the Sender's territory. You guys got on some slice out yeah. there, Kenny? Uh, up, in the, up in the pizza value out we there do. on the East End? Mm-hmm. That's good. Uh, but no, go check them out. Say hello to our friends, PJ's underscore slice on the Twitter, and let them know that the awesome cast sent you. Uh, thank you to them for supporting Pittsburgh Podcasting. All right, so let's get into. We had a lot of stuff from. Uh, this is one actually I learned about um, from our friend uh, Kim Lyons over on the broadcast. They were in here recording a, a lot of great episodes. Uh, definitely check them out. Uh, they're 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 getting back to it here after a little bit of hiatus. Um, Golden Quill nominated the broadcast, by the way. I want to throw that out there. Um, but technically, is teaming up with Public Source. This is an open data. Um, uh, this is an open data PGH six month reporting project on the city's open data efforts. Um, there's a uh, weekly newsletter on there right now. Um, this is something that, uh, she was telling me about that, uh, uh, they've been, they've done in Philly and a few other cities, um, to cover civic tech in Pittsburgh. Uh, so a pretty cool thing that's, you know, definitely, definitely an interesting, um, I think, and of course, this is something that you've dealt with, Kenny. Of course, mm-hmm. it was, was startup weekend and civic. I think the first one I was at was yeah, one yeah, of two. Yeah, there was ran, a startup right? weekend civic. Yeah, in September 2015 and and whatnot. Uh, and actually, same year. Uh, so the 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 technical dot ly mm-hmm. thing that they're doing and open data pgh. It's um, I'm actually really excited that it's happening because um, they're taking. Um, uh, 
like the city's um, Open Data Resource Center, or technically the Western Pennsylvania Regional Data Center, um, is something that I had a small part in helping to build back in like 2014 to 2015, and really trying to drum up a lot more engagement and interest in utilizing a lot of those data sets that are out there and getting people aware of like what they can do with all this cool like either GIS data or taking things from uh, census or you know 311 police data all of that kind of stuff um so definitely check it out there's a newsletter that you can subscribe to yeah so get 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 up on it so mm -hmm. uh that's awesome uh so another cool thing i mean i i love how data centric like our government has gone over the last several years <laughs> um so but and it's become useful and you're we're seeing these things roll out little by little that are actually helping like the, from tracking snow plows to mm -hmm the pavements to the bird's eye view where you can figure out, you know, permits and stuff. I, I, I belong to a couple of community groups for beach view on Facebook. And, and so often, you know, the, the representatives from a mayor's office or the councilman will be like, well, here, you can look at it right here on bird's eye view or something. And you can see everything that applies to like a property of concern or something like mm -hmm. that. So that's really good. Cool. Yeah. No data is the new, um, you know, most valuable commodity. Mm -hmm. And if it's properly kind of, if it's quality data and cleaned and labeled, um, you know, that's really the basis for any kind of, um, you know, AI based system. Um, uh, it's the most in demand resource, you know, right now, uh, like around the world, just good training data for, for people to, to use. So, um, you know, Mayor Peduto having signed in his like open data legislation like first day when he was in office, mm -hmm. definitely, you know, um, yeah, staying proactive with that. It's awesome. Also, uh, shout out to our friend Brandon out there in KC um, that uh, he's actually he's going to the Special Olympics uh, for bowling here uh, soon. And uh, he, he gave us a, a, an article from comicbook.com. Xbox is going to be partnering with the Special Olympics for the video game competition. It looks like this involves Forza. Um, so kind of cool that that's kind of becoming part of that too. And, and yeah, and what I think is interesting, they made a, a specific adaptive controller for the Xbox One mm -hmm. um, to help those with, with disabilities, which really allows additional gameplay um, for those that can't, that can't potentially leverage the typical controller. So I thought that was a really cool way to to expand that platform and, and, and give everybody a chance to be able to play. And this is something that's been going for a while. And it's cool to see Microsoft doing it like, you know, first party like that. But I know and, and I, can't, I can't bring a, I can't recall for the life of me who it was. But we interviewed somebody that was, I think, an Alpha Lab company that was doing a similar thing where they were creating these adaptive um, um, controllers so so you know pe people could with disabilities could still play video games um, you know like with their feet or or with you know however you know their mm -hmm. their their limbs were developed or however that is you yeah know? I mm -hmm. think it was Banson Labs and yeah it was their, Banson um, their main product is called Zogo X O G O um, and uh, they they do both the um, like the hardware itself as well as kind of like that networking element of it where um, they're making pretty much any kind of like IOT or connected device accessible to, you know, yeah, people who might, um, not be physically able to, you know, control them. Thank you. So if you look up Hacksbox, H-A-X-B-O-X on the awesomecast.com, you'll actually see our interview with them from, uh, 2015. And there's actually a, a look at their display, um, from an Alpha Lab demo day, I believe, um, with like some different controllers and things that were, um, kind of, uh, uh, you know, adapted for things. Yeah, I think they've currently also got like, you know, you can dr fly drones and other kinds of things with their nice. interfaces. So I'd love to check in great. with them again, see how they've been going with things. Yeah. So, um, Banson Labs, uh, go check them out. But, uh, but no, really cool that Xbox is doing that too. Mm -hmm. So, um, also from the, you guys out there, hey, Matt Weller. Our Patreoner uh, actually dropped a message back on cord cutting because we were we were talking about a few different things lately. Um, by the way, side thing, I, I finally hooked up my HBO Go that's free with my AT and T sub subscription, and uh, it actually hooks me up with Directv now. So now I log into Directv now and I have four streaming channels, <laughs> and they're all HBO. 
<laughs> so it's cool because you can, I can actually go in and see what DirecTV now looks like. But then Which they I just also, redid that user interface. And right, it's a lot better. Right, it, it seemed really nice from the from the apps and the things that I brought up so far. Plus, I get the HBO Go we, login. We should do like a sidebar that covers cord cutting because because we've talked about it so many times on the show. There's yeah, um, we've we've done it for like the the Christmas special every once in a while. So. I mean, it's definitely. I know dirt has dirt has cut the cord. I cut the yep. cord. Went back. I'm thinking about going back to cutting the cord now that there's more options out there. I was never corded. <laughs> you were never corded. Um, Freedom. No, I, I just feel like there's so many good stories that can be told and sharing of information. Yeah. There's so mm-hmm. many different ways to do so many different things, especially today. And, and keeping it legal. I think one of the, the cool things is there's you can keep it legal, right? It used yeah. to be back in the day, you were pretty much pirating a ton of mm-hmm. ton of data there was um, there was definitely monday night raw was the hardest thing because there was no way for you to do it mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. you just found this site that streams the thing from england yeah, yeah. <laughs> the commercials hey. were always fun oh they were they <laughs> were always with an accent and different and everything but anyways matt says uh the cord cutting discussion on direct tv now seems to be the first streaming based tv company to have all the features needed to compete with the traditional cable satellite which is funny since they're the same company as the traditional cable satellite <laughs> they all <laughs> at&t uverse and direct tv so there's that too uh, they always the other thing with at&t stores they always try to talk me into direct tv they almost had me and i didn't realize they were talking about the dish one and not the direct tv now mm. it's, it's, you know they almost got me um but anyways uh they're the only one with viacom channels my kids only watch nickelodeon so that's a must-have and they just added their uh oh screensaver and they just added their true cloud dvr so for 55 dollars a month and plus a 15 dollar to bump my internet to the next level we'll be saving 70 dollars a month from what we paid for regular direct tv and we'll be trading huge boxes on the tvs for fire tv sticks if my wife gives up gives it the thumbs up we're testing right now yeah you gotta pass that the the wife test Mm -hmm. the family test make sure everybody can operate everything it's not too much you know you're not like juggling controllers or something that's a little too much for them so and that, and that's the thing between those and the hulus and the you know it, it's it's so easy to even one show i was listening to was talking about how like amazon just adding showtime for a week to watch something you know when something comes in season is so easy to turn on and off these days versus mm-hmm. if you had to deal with a cable company and everything and you get into a contract that you didn't realize you were getting into it's happened to me before um you know that's that's a really cool opportunity there so, so thanks matt for that 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 uh feedback there too the, the one thing i find in the, the one thing i find interesting about direct tv now is that you're only permitted two simultaneous streams and there's no way to pay for more so that's the one thing. Yeah. Not that we would, not that we have that problem, because I've, I've really try to look at all angles. But if you had a house of four with six TVs or something like that, um, the two simultaneous streams might be a, a problem for for some. But the, to his point, the Viacom channels and you get the AT and T Sportsnet, so you can get Penn's games, you can get that kind of content, and then take it anywhere. Mm-hmm. Um, I think is pretty darn cool. Definitely. It is very tantalizing under AT&T to be like, yeah, I'll add that your TV. Yeah, well, I'll do this. Yeah, mm-hmm. it's like it's, it's so easy, which is kind of the problem, right, yeah. in the long run. So, well, here's a fun one from Riz. Uh, he was on the video game side. This home improvement simulator is the best seller on Steam right now. Mm-hmm. It's called House Flipper. And it's a, they say it's a very earnest look at, <laughs> well, the graphics are good too, at um, home improvement. Um, man, it makes me, uh, man, I wish knocking out a wall was that easy. Holy crap. Uh, <laughs> um, ah, bugs. yeah, yeah. It's pretty interesting. You know, for, you know, for somebody that I am woefully behind on home improvement projects, like, I don't know if adding a video game component is going to be good for me or will it actually push me in the right way? You're like, sh- I can try stuff out in this, right? Yeah, that's you it. think, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's what will happen. This is exactly this what it's is like. Exactly what will happen, right? Wow. And sell it. Wow. So for all of you that uh, watch that home and garden TV, now you can uh, really get into that. It's so. like a step further on Sims. <laughs> yeah, like you, you can, can kind of like because that, that that was when I played Sims. That was the thing I spent most of the time doing was fixing up my house. I'm like, I want the most expensive stuff. I'm cheating. I'm getting simoleons. We're gonna do this, <laughs> and I want to make the coolest house. I don't care who comes over. <laughs> nice. 
Nice. No, that that one's actually super practical. I'm sure it comes with all sorts of like you know transferable <laughs> skills that you can take. <laughs> mm-hmm. You know, either except, into your I, own. Except like, for using the sledgehammer and the wall just goes away. That's that's yeah. a little. That's yeah. a little off. The cleanup is super easy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, just yeah. Click yeah. the button. What do you do with all these house building materials? Just throw them on the no, no. They just they just fade away like a like a like a death in 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 any you know anything you play any shooter you play right. So I don't know. Anyways, um, well we want to give a shout out to our friend uh, Occupy Pro Wrestling. They got something really cool. I only a few days left on this. Uh, proceeds from their store over at wetamaneuver.net. Yes, this is a wrestling thing for this month, but it's for a very, very good cause as uh, proceeds will go to support the Asperger's and Autism Network. You can go check out some really cool things over there. Again, whatamaneuver.net and look for the Occupy Pro Wrestling short store up there um, under the collections. Um, some fun stuff. We're going to get Katie definitely the... Uh, the uh, 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 Friends Smart T-shirt, yes. or if you like the old Legends of the Hidden Temple, uh, Legends of the Lucha Temple, for any of you guys who are watching uh, Lucha Underground, that's coming back here. Wrestling explains it all. It's a very, it's a very uh, uh, Nickelodeon era, <laughs> 90s Nickelodeon era T-shirts in here, aren't there? Uh, so go check that out. Whatamaneuver.net, our good friend Alex Carr is out there. Uh, alexcars.media and occupyprowrestling.com uh, supporting a great cause this month so go check that out and thank you so much for supporting the awesome cast okay let's touch on a couple stories stories before we get out of here real quick um speaking of cord cutter this was i thought this was curious so we talked about um oh what is what was the one that had the small antennas Aereo, the big the big uh uh uh, or was cord it arrow? Case. arrow, arrow. And it was like A E R O. Right, yeah. right. It was the one where they had the quarter sized antennas up on the tops of buildings. Right, and, and they York. got sued because basically you could watch like a New York TV channels in, you know, in Pittsburgh. Right. Well, kind of similar, but it's kind of all internal. Um, Dish is releasing something called Air TV that is going to broadcast uh, over the air channels to all of your devices. So you yeah, put the antenna up in your house, but now you can broadcast that to you know, anything, you know, your phone or anything you want. Uh, it's supposed to be kind of a, a placeholder for people that do sling TV that don't, that aren't in an area that will get your local channels due to, due to rights or, or, or your location or zip code or whatever the case may be. But some, you know, of course, something that you can get with an antenna and it rates really well. It looks with your, uh, sling TV. Um, it's about $120. So, it's an interesting option, I think, for uh, for cord cutters out there to look at. But it kind of goes into the line of like our our TiVo discussions that uh, you talk about, Chilla. Yeah, and what I like about this is it doesn't cost anything extra with like there's no monthly fees. Right, right. It just bakes um, in. Yeah. So I thought that was thought that was really really cool. Awesome. Um, Katie, tell me what Hololens is doing. Hololens is um, helping those who are visually impaired. Get around with sound. Nice. They're awesome. acting as uh, eyes for blind users and guides with audio prompts. Uh, as you move about the space, it's identifying what's in the area, and it assigns a sound to the particular thing you're going to come in contact with. Uh, for example, it sounds like the walls will make kind of a hiss noise, more like a white noise, not a snake hiss. <laughs> I like how they <laughs> kind of say that in there. <laughs> it's snake hiss. Stay away from the wall. Um, they can scan the scene with objects announcing themselves from left to right in direction they are located. A uh, single object can be selected and will repeat its call out to help the user find it. So it's pretty cool. So this is this for completely blind or partially blind? Because basically, you know, instead of being the AR, it's it's usually it's using the sensors right on on there to mm-hmm. mm-hmm. kind of read the stuff in front of you. Yeah, it doesn't really specific, specify mm-hmm. high level features like walls, obstacles, doors. Imagine, I mean, you can use it for both. Like, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Any number of contexts. That's awesome. Mm-hmm. So, and this is, and this isn't supposed to be a day-to-day thing. Like, this is kind of a next step, mm-hmm. right? Like, I don't see them rolling out a bunch of hollow lens for blind people, mm-hmm. but this could inform into a smaller version that you wear on your head, like maybe a a Google Glass or something a little a little, little better for for the blind. Which there there have been some things like this and i think we've seen we've seen stories like this but 
not with Google Glass, but with like bigger, higher end, you're attached to a computer kind of situation, right? Mm -hmm. So this mm -hmm. is even shrinking down that to a Windows 10 computer that's sitting on your head. Yeah. As bulky as that is, but still that's impressive. No, there's um, there's a lot of interesting things that people have been doing with like computer vision and um, image recognition, like AIs and trying to figure out um, what it, what makes for the best user experience. Mm -hmm. um, Cause they've got a, a growing number of like just smartphone apps where you hold it up around you and it'll tell you like what it's looking at. Um, and you know, different kinds of wearable versions of, of that. Um, so all, all still kind of cl clumsily, but still taking steps toward mm -hmm. like really, you know, enabling that kind of more um, fluid movement of the world. Awesome. Um, yeah, it'll be interesting to see how that kind of rolls out here too. So, Okay, Katie, I had one in here for you. I know, I'm excited. You saw that? Yeah, I saw that. Uh, Pornhub has made its own <laughs> VPN, guys. It says it will protect you from snooping and censorship yes. across the globe. Yes. Or so you just keep your Pornhub stats to yourself, apparently. Keep all your secrets. They have like a thousand servers in more than 15 countries. <laughs> they don't keep track of your info. Uh, if you do the basic, it's free. And uh, this is this is the thing I have the question about. What's so the I, basic? Um, you could, it's free access with the, um, with our server. So sneaky, sneaky, sneaky. Mm. So sneaky, sneaky. Okay. So here's my question. If anyone uses this, please, I don't care if you Facebook message me. I want to know what the ads are that <laughs> pop up during this. Like, I want to know what people are buying, what the, what the, who the, um, the consumers are here where they've just, who they've determined. I really want to know who, what the ads are, but you can pay a little bit more money and it'll be a little faster for you. And uh, there won't be any ads. Is there? Is there really like I'm presuming? Because most of the ads for this are just for more porn. I thought. I don't know. Like it I've just never, says I, ads. It could be anything. It could be for toothpaste. I don't know. <laughs> it could be wet wipes. It I mean, be. there's. I mean, I actually have, depending I, on what you're looking at. Yeah. yeah. Sure. I mean, I have guesses. I'm in marketing. I have guesses, but <laughs> I, I want to know. It could be things. Like this is for science. Toyotas. I don't know. <laughs> Toyotas. <laughs> <laughs> Turns out Toyota's really big with the Pornhub community. Yeah, Who knew? you never know. Who knew? Should Scarehouse advertise on Pornhub? <laughs> <laughs> you don't know. You could be anywhere. I'm telling you. Oh, is it just, does it set up a full device VPN or is oh, it just their app that? in a browser? I think it looks more like just their app, but let me look at this other article. There's like a couple uh, yeah. articles. It says as long as iOS, Android, Windows, Mac OS. Um, do, 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 do. Mm hmm. Research, research, research. I know that that article doesn't have it right now. We'll make noises as we look. <laughs> yeah, I don't think I don't see anything specific. Yeah, and they just conveniently don't really leave any links to Pornhub itself with the more information. <laughs> I wonder why. Um, yeah, yeah. So, um, yeah, that's that's worth a little bit. Uh, Chilla, uh, why don't you investigate? In uh, I'll investigate and report back. <laughs> <laughs> The things I have looked for on my laptop at this point, they're probably not shocked by anything I do. Not even... Oh, see, Viagra. See, I don't even want to search. I, <laughs> yeah. I have a computer next to an open window to the street. I can't search for this right now. Well, I'm away from the camera, so you yeah, don't know you, what you, I'm looking at You're the right only now. safe zone over Ooh. there in, in mm -hmm. this very public space. The, 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 the drawbacks of moving yourself out of the basement and into the uh, uh, main street. Yeah. Mm. So It doesn't I'm, look like on the first page that there's any info. Okay. I'm going to have to... I'd probably have to. So, so 398 episodes in and you haven't pulled up Pornhub on the on the screen? Uh, not for more than two seconds. Uh, oh. <laughs> it's definitely happened. It's definitely happened on the show <laughs> by accident. Actually, those Sun articles in the UK are a problem sometimes mm -hmm. because the advertisements on the side are a little explicit sometimes. So um magical yeah it's not like it hasn't happened but at least like nobody on facebook reported us uh so on that <laughs> note kenny glad you came welcome back we hope you actually come back again oh, yeah. <laughs> no, this is fun um uh, of course uh, uh guys i uh, want to give a shout out before we head out of here uh to our friends down the road at sparkle dragons magical emporium uh, where you're looking for a cup of tea, a psychic reading, or just want to get a perfectly whimsical item for yourself. Um, and I heard I heard rumblings of them maybe doing a witch ride, a witch bike ride, wow. uh, sometime around ha 
Halloween. So they got they got to always have really cool events going on over there here in the Beachview neighborhood. So come on down, check it out. They got a fancy new sign, so it's a lot easier to find them. Just a couple doors down from our friends at Slice on Broadway, actually. Um, check them out at SparkleDragon.com. Say hi to our friend Joyce. She's in here for a lot of events uh, as well. So um, thanks a lot to everybody for supporting the show. Kenny, where can people find what's going on with you? Uh, yeah, I mean. Twitter, perhaps, on uh, at KNMYCHN. <laughs> perhaps Twitter, C-H-N. maybe yeah. Twitter? Question mark. Um, I, I'm not doing a whole lot on like the social media or public presence kind of stuff um, these days, and Twitter is like the most of it. So, yeah, awesome. My name without the vowels. Kenny Chen, no ease. Yep, vowels are overrated. That's right. Katie Dudas, she is with the Scarehouse at Scarehouse.com. Yeah, I don't even want to admit the things I was looking at over here. I guess it's a vintage nightmare board game from 1991 Ooh. that I found on eBay that would maybe nice. a work-related purchase. <laughs> <laughs> Bye. <laughs> Bye now. Kate Dudas so on the Twitter. Anything else going on with Scarehouse or anything you want to talk about? Ooh, Scarehouse Weekly comes back this oh. Friday. Yeah, you can see me talk live at Scarehouse nice. about stuff. Nice. About things. And John Chichilla, chillatech.net. Chill on the Twitters, John Chichilla on the Facebooks. There you go. Thank you, everybody, for joining us. And, of course, uh, in a couple weeks here is the eight-year anniversary and celebration of uh, 400 episodes. It's going to be, we, we bumped it to the 12th because just so we can keep on that 400 episode mark for the celebration. Uh, so look for that uh, uh, and more information coming up here in the next week or so for that. We'll be back again next week, 7 p.m. Eastern time at uh, the Awesome Cast Facebook page. You guys can join us in the chat like everybody that did tonight. Uh, thank you so much, Amanda. And uh, the rest of the crew, scrolling uh, Alex and everybody else that popped in, uh, including my mom. And thank you, producer Missy, uh, that's been keeping us going all night long, too. Oh, wait, wait, she's back there. Hold on. There you go. Hey, she's waving. Hey. Um, We'll see you guys next week. Thank you. You've been our awesome audience. Have an awesome week. This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com.